Hello and welcome back to Morris and Container Handling Solutions booth at Pack Expo Connects. Today we are talking specifically about retrofits and upgrades and how we can help make your current and existing machinery work for you as you're trying to add new containers, improve efficiencies, etc. I'm Dustin Lee, Director of Sales at Morrison. Uh, please chat with us. Uh, we have technical experts on the line that you can chat with through the chat feature. We also, in the, in the bio or, or in uh, the notes here, you can log on to a Teams call. Uh, if there are technical issues, we've had some uh, technical issues throughout the week with Pack Expo Connects platform. So we are going to be on a Teams call during this that you can talk to us there, as well as we'll sit on afterwards for about 15 minutes um, or longer if you want to come and, and chat with us. So please, please check us out there. Uh, but today we are going to be talking about retrofits and upgrades. Uh, most of the equipment that Morrison puts into the field is is a retrofit. Um, we we go in and we one of my favorite things to do is go into a line and say, hey, you know, where are your pain points? What are you guys struggling with? What keeps you guys up at night? And see how we can help you, uh, and and what we can do to work with existing equipment to put in something that's going to allow your your new container to run in the line or run at a higher efficiency level. So we'll go through a number of different videos. We'll ask or answer a few questions after those videos and, and hopefully we can chat you, with you specifically about your application need. Uh, please note that that all of the equipment that we're highlighting, um, you know, we don't have a Model XYZ to, to really offer. Every single thing is, is custom designed and built to order. So as you're looking at these videos, think about this as, you know, an idea or a spark in your mind as the hey, maybe we can help you out in that way and, and that's that's really where we come in and we shine. So um, note that that everything is custom for your application. Uh, the first video that we're going to be showing here is actually for down bottle reject. Uh, it's a common thing that a lot of plants deal with. Down bottles create a lot of havoc for a variety of pieces of equipment and so it's important that those get rejected off the line uh, without any sort of uh, any sort of uh, disruption to to line efficiency and, and line productivity. So we're gonna go through a couple of these videos and uh, answer any questions right after. Down bottles are a common occurrence at many plants that create nuisances with line efficiency because machinery cannot deal with down bottles. Morrison will come into a plant and retrofit an existing line with this down bottle reject system. One of the great things about this is it is a static down bottle reject. So it does not require any sort of air, any sort of uh, mechanical components. It is a, a series of rails that are designed and engineered appropriately so that it will kick off those containers from an existing line layout. So all the customer has to do is put a bin in said location. This has been a very effective solution for uh, many of our customers that um, we'll utilize this to, to maintain consistent flow of the line. So one thing before we get into the questions, please note that all of the videos that we're highlighting are, are simulations in our plant prior to shipping to the customer. So if you see anything that looks a little odd, that's why uh, we're doing our best to simulate what's the actual production environment at Morrison prior to shipment. Uh, so what questions have come through? Do these uh, down bottle reject guys work for all container types? The question is, is do, do these down bottle rejects work for every single type of container? Um, there are definitely ones that are better than others. Um, so for example, this is a great example of one that would work really well in our um, static down bottle reject. So there's no, there's no force that's actually knocking them off. It is completely static as it's going through. Um, it is taller than it is wide. So this is a great one. Um, this would actually be a product that would, would probably not be um, as it is, it's only two and a half inches tall by three and a half inches wide. So if this was going through, this obviously wouldn't be a great one because there's not a differential in the height to width or height to diameter relationship. Um, it doesn't have to be a round container though. This is a great one that would work as well because it's taller as it's traveling down than if it would be knocked over. So great question. What about what other ones? multiple container sizes? Is there like a, a quick change design? For you? There is, yeah. So the uh, question was, if there's multiple container sizes, how do we deal with that from like a changeover perspective? 
Um, everything that Morrison does is, is toolless changeover. So we provide core plates that would allow uh, for a very fast toolless changeover for the operator or mechanic, uh, but it really is, is dummy proof. We color coordinate them so that there's no way that they, or hopefully no way that an operator will mess it up uh, to be able to do that changeover. And then in regards to multiple of them running on the same setup, uh, how we always will operate is, is we'll design it to the largest container size and then testing will confirm whether or not an additional size can run on that same setup. So great questions. If you have further questions, please chat us uh, and we can try to answer them with our technical experts online or uh, join us in the Teams call uh, during or after. So we're going to move on to a next segment here. Um, this is highlighting our square drive upgrade. Um, so it's one of the things that commonly is done uh, at a common approach for Morrison to go into to improve um, basically maintenance costs for customers. A, a great example is we were dealing with a, a juice manufacturing company. Uh, they had a really long section of timing screws that were between the filler and the capper. So the bottle was already filled, it was transitioning to where the capper was, and it was a, I think it was a four screw segment. And every, was it, Alan, was it every two weeks? It was every two weeks. Every two weeks they were changing over are having to rebuild their intermediate brackets that were support for the, the screw transfer. That is way too often for all, all of the, the system to be rebuilt. And so that was a lot of cost. Uh, we went in and, and put our square drive upgrade in that had kind of two features. One, um, it really highlights the square drive connection. So with the square drive connection here, um, so there's only one way to put it on, and then also the intermediate housing itself, um, it, it changed it so that it was wash down capable. Um, this would be something that commonly would be used by a lot of companies where it would basically is a sphere and a pin. So the driving force is the pin that goes through the driver itself. Whereas with our square drive, it has four points of contact that are the driving force. And this section here is really for, for timing and location. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, the actual driving force of, of the screw itself. So by implementing our upgrade, uh, they went from rebuilding it every two weeks to rebuilding it like once every nine months, once a year. So uh, huge cost savings, the ROI uh, paid, paid back for itself very, very fast. So, so would I be able to retrofit my existing screws to have a Morrison drive connection? So the, the question was whether or not we could go in and retrofit existing screws uh, that are in the field instead of having to, to supply brand new screws uh, for everything. And the, the answer is absolutely. It's a common thing that we, we go about. We'd love it if you bought all new screws, but understand that you already have that some that are in place that need to be retrofit. So here's an example of a wide variety of, of different types of uh, drivers that would go inside of a timing screw. And the important feature is this one that goes directly into the main bore of the, of the screw itself. And so we can customize that to match what your screw needs to have as that intake. And then we can utilize our standard square driver. So absolutely we can do so. Um, going to this, you know, why why would someone need to really want to do this other than the intermediate bracket portion of it? But this square driver, um, it lasts a whole lot longer. And so in a way it hurts Morrison because we'd love it if you bought a whole bunch of spare parts of these type of drivers from us. But the fact that it's got these four uh, points of contact for that driving feature, uh, these last a whole lot longer. They're hardened to the appropriate level. So they, they last a lot longer than some of the, the softer stainlesses or softer uh, metals that, that you would have in place. And so it really ends up being a great ROI for our customer base. So uh, the next video here that, that we're going to be talking about uh, is a common one that, that a lot of companies will deal with, where you want to go from one size. Uh, so in this case, dealing with a, a gallon milk jug that they wanted to run a half gallon on. Um, so they did not have a screw in place and they wanted to be able to run this. Uh, they were unable to do so effectively and efficiently because of the, the change in, in size. So instead of flood feeding the infeed star, they needed to have a screw to feed it into the system. So take a look. So again, this system, uh, before Morrison got involved, they had gallon containers that were feeding into the filler. 
And because the machine was designed appropriately, they didn't use a timing screw to create spacing to go into that filler. The star wheel just pulled the gap required. When they switched over to the half gallon size, they needed to be able to pull a, a gap between products to appropriately feed it into that filler without creating jams. So what Morrison does here is, and what we're highlighting in this video, is we have a mechanical connection driven from the main drive shaft and drive system from the filler itself. So we're highlighting all of the mechanical components that will transition the power from the filler itself out to the timing screw. We try to set everything up at Morrison prior to shipping. And so with all of the, the plywood that you see here, we're just trying to demonstrate how we can can install it in the field and, and try to troubleshoot prior to shipment. With this design, we tried to implement as much flexibility on the front end, knowing that it needs to be field fit and finished and modified to deal with anything going on in the plant. So we've got some adjustability to connect to shafts, to connect to existing gears uh, that doesn't put us into any sort of corner. And it, it can be flexible if there's any sort of changes that need to, to occur to make sure that it can get up and running as fast as possible. Because really that's the, the goal at the end of the day is to minimize downtime, get the machine up and running quickly and efficiently. So this is something that, that is a common approach if you've got a machine, a used machine, or an existing machine that doesn't have a timing screw on it, uh, we can definitely review and, and add it to the line to be able to run different size containers that you need to run. So within that video, we're highlighting specifically how, uh, how we customize the, the slave drive connection to you. So we'd come out and we'd have a field service engineer measure the, the machine and figure out what that connection needs to be like to, to work specifically for your application. This next video that we're gonna highlight uh, is again, a very custom one, highlighting uh, how we can retrofit something to an existing line to really make, make existing conveyors work together. Take a look. This system here is, is definitely unique, uh, but there's a lot of companies that are out there that are trying to piece two conveyors together and need to have conveyor transitions uh, between their bottles and, and they might not have room for a side transfer, which is the preferred type of conveyor transfer that Morrison will always talk about. But when you have an end-to-end -end transfer, you have this, this, truthfully, a little bit goofy of a 90-degree of a uh, transition, you've got to be able to maintain bottle stability through that, that transfer. So what we're doing here is we're, we're taking two existing uh, conveyors where they want to make a 90-degree transfer, and we're utilizing a timing screw to have a tapered diameter and root diameter to adjust with the, the change in direction. And we will control that bottle as it goes across the dead plate to change direction of flow. This is definitely not a, a traditional timing screw that you might see in, in the field, but this highlights some of the retrofit stuff that we'll do to allow customers to deal with the equipment that they've got on site and not have to buy a, a whole lot of new equipment or a whole new line to be able to, to keep things moving. So we've shown you a lot of cool videos today. Uh, again, hope this sparks some ideas with you so that you can determine how we might be able to customize some things for you in your operation and everyday changes that are needed to continue business moving forward. Please reach out to us. We are on the Teams chat uh, that is in the link within our information on our virtual booth. We're also on the, the live chat within the Pack Expo Connects platform. Um, we're going to be sitting on this Teams call for a little while, so please, please reach out to us with your existing needs, uh, any questions that you may have. Uh, we do have uh, five more demos the rest of this week, so we've got three on Thursday, so check out our booth to sign up for one of those. Uh, and we also have two on Friday, so we hope to connect with you again soon, and, and thanks for joining us.